Welcome to another Xerox Office Hours. This time it's legitimately Friday, so that's something. Um, it's Friday afternoon, my time, and that's always a nice time to record a video. Uh, just finished up a new feature that I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit. And this is a continuation of the last video where we were talking about how we were considering mitigating abuse uh, on, on Xerox IO and, and dealing with uh, free users setting up web shares or HTTP shares of any kind and, and using them for phishing sites and things like that. So we had thought we were going to possibly consider uh, incorporating like a credit card uh, verification in order to, to allow you to access the public front end. But we've since landed on an even better idea, which is to incorporate uh, interstitial pages for uh, free tier users, where if you sign up you know, for a free tier Xerox IO account um, and you share something using one of the HTTP modes like web, caddy, or proxy, uh, your users will see uh, an, inter an interstitial page uh, when they first arrive at your share. So well, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, this is my development environment. Uh, this feature is basically done. So let's just take a quick look at it. So the, this is, I've got the document, the documentation open for this, and it's pretty short. Basically, it describes the how the mechanism itself works, which is uh, Xerox supports some number of front ends. So when you do a Xerox access private, that's a front end. Xerox access private has nothing to do with interstitial pages currently. Um, it only applies to public front ends. So the Xerox IO site uses a, a single public front end called public that uses GeoDNS and, and listeners in multiple regions, but it's one front end. And the way that the front end figures out the configuration of your share is through a config object in ZD itself. And so this, this diagram is basically showing how that wiring works. So what happens is when you ask Xerox to create a share for you, it creates the necessary resources in OpenZD. And one of the things it creates is a config object of type Xerox proxy v1. And what this document's describing is the controller, the Xerox controller will make a decision about whether or not your share should use interstitial pages if the front end is configured to, to display them. So what that lets us do is when we start doing bring your own domain and we have many front ends in the system, we can decide at a front end level which front ends are going to display interstitials and which don't. Um, and it also describes further in the docs how individual accounts can have interstitials turned off. So when we start doing uh, you know, pay tier accounts, we can just write a grant for that account that lets them skip the interstitials on any front ends. So this document kind of describes that. So I'll just show you what it looks like in practice. Um, if I pull up my uh, front end configuration for my development environment, and this, these keys are irrelevant, this is long gone. I just keep it here. As, I keep it here for posterity's sake in case when I want to set it up again, the syntax is there. So basically, if you've got a public front end, there's a new uh, key interstitial, you can set it to true. And that what that will do is for your public front end, if uh, the share configuration suggests that interstitial should be used, it will display one. So this is my Xerox controller. This is my, uh, me my metrics bridge. And this is my public front end for my local development environment. So I changed the config. So let's go ahead and restart it. And you can see now interstitial is set to true. Um, so what happens is if I go to let's do a Xerox share public headless backend mode web, share the current directory, right? So if we do that and then we hit this link, what's going to happen is now you're going to see an interstitial page. You're about to visit a Xerox share located at this host, made available for three for free through Xerox. Only visit this if you know you know what's going on. Don't disclose personal or financial information, all common sense stuff. Um, non-interactive clients, like if I do a curl on that, on that URL, I'm also going to get the interstitial currently, right? But I can set a header of Z skip Xerox interstitial equals one. Uh, oh, you got it. It's not, it's got to be a correct header, right? So now I just get the interstitial skipped. Yeah, that's correct. This is the this is what the HTML for the file share looks like for the web share. So you can skip interstitials. Maybe we'll look at doing something clever with 
user agents to try and you know only show them to user user agents that should have them. Um, but for now, you've got got a header to let you enable that. You can also set the Xerox interstitial cookie, and that will will get rid of the interstitial for you. So basically, when you click the visit share button, it sets a client cookie in my browser so that uh, it lasts for a week, and then I can basically click on this again, and it will skip. It's not going to show me that same warning again. So so if I create another new share and I click on that, I'm going to get the interstitial again, right? So click visit share, let me through. Um, obviously it respects paths. So if I go to slash dot GitHub, right? It's still going to show me the interstitial, but when I click the button, it's going to let me into that folder specifically. So it it's going to respect all of the query parameters, all that sort of stuff, all the things you'd expect it to do. Um, and if you happen to be, self-hosting your own uh, Xerox service instance, and you want to override interstitials per user, you can do this. You can go and connect to my Postgres database. There's a new table called um, skip interstitial grants. Uh, it's DT, it's just D, right? Yeah. So. This is the schema of it. It's basically a row and it has a, an account ID in it. So if, if the user, if the account has a row, so if I do insert into skip interstitial grants, account ID values one, which is my account ID, right? And then if I create a new share and I click on it, you can ignore this not found. There's a, um, it, it's, taking for some reason my local environment's taking a minute to create terminators that had to do with terminators not being present in fact i think it says i know yeah dial failed that share has no terminators there's nothing to do with the interstitial thing but basically that just shows you if you um create a new share and the account has that grant applied to it you'll not have an interstitial regardless of the uh front end configuration setting so that's this is gonna be a super short Office Hours video, just kind of wanted to talk about the new interstitial pages thing that's coming out. Uh, I'm getting ready to do the Xerox release itself. In fact, as a bonus, as a bonus, let's go ahead and do the Xerox release. This is ready to go. So let's just go ahead and tag it. So if we do get pulse, make sure I'm current, which I believe I am, get log. Yep, everything's in here. Take a look at the change log. Uh, so in this new release that I'm about to tag, 436 interstitial, interstitial pages, um, there's a declaration true in the node SDK for Xerox, uh, that a user asked for that will be coming out when this build gets tagged and released. And then there's also a fix for, uh, 32 bit arm platforms, like 32 bit operating systems on raspberry Pis and such. There are a bunch of users that were having problems with floating point exceptions. Apparently there's something related to floating point hardware on those platforms we've tweaked the build so that that should be a lot more compatible across a lot more devices. So that should be good to go. So let's do it. Let's tag zero at four at 36. Hit push tags. All right. So there we go. Xerox 36 coming out the door. Um, bunch of, bunch of interesting stuff coming up in the next office hours videos. Uh, so stay tuned. I really, I, I th thank you so much to everybody that, uh, pays attention to these videos and and is participating in the community and likes Xerox and all that sort of stuff. It always means a lot to me personally if anyone throws a star on the GitHub repo for Xerox. Um, just that that means a lot to me. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see, see you in the next one. Thanks. Happy weekend.